Viewer discretion is advised. It's the everything and everything show. Everything and everything. Not one, not, not two, not three, but everything. Everything, everything. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode. What are we on? Episode four of the Everything and Everything podcast. I am your host, Ty the host, and we are back. I know I've been gone for, you know, a little bit. I didn't post one last week, but I was waiting for my new equipment, and I got caught up in some, you know, life stuff. But I'm back. I have a webcam now. I mean, my laptop has a built-in webcam, but let's be serious. No one wants to use their built-in webcam. It doesn't come out as good. So I have a Logitech C920, I believe. HD 1080p it looks amazing so probably next week I'll probably do like a webcam type podcast or what I'm thinking I should do is just do like a daily daily something vlog and so yeah guys I have a daily vlog that which will lead up to the podcast itself so the vlog probably won't have big news stories but I'll have something and I'll just talk about that stuff I hear on the daily but got that and I have my new microphone which is a blue snowball so I looked up you know the best microphones for a good amount of money and I found this it's small it comes with a tripod and it's not that expensive I believe I got this off of Amazon for I want to say $60 it's not bad I also got a pot filter but I was testing it out and I don't I didn't even really need the pot filter for the mic because it's that damn great so the blue snowball was I think 60 the Logitech C920 was about 60 and then the pot filter was like six dollars so all together I think I spent like a hundred and something dollars that came out to like 121 wasn't bad it was great if you guys are doing YouTube or anything you would definitely need a great microphone so I do recommend this and you also need a webcam because face cam is the new thing so both of these very good products if you're looking for something that's top-notch and you're starting off buy these two it's only a hundred something to one dollars and it's gonna last you a long long time I wouldn't lie to you but fuck all that we are back and today we're gonna take it slow the holiday season is approaching, so why not talk about that? We'll keep it slow. I'm not going to have much news to talk about, if any at all. This is going to be a conversation between me and you. So the holiday season is approaching. Now, I love the holidays. I don't know about everyone else, but me, the holidays is just it's just a warm feeling you get. For you, you just wake up happy for no reason. That's just me. I love the holidays. I love the themes that come out during the holidays, everybody's decorating, and there's always something around the city. It's just bright lights, everything. You got football for uh, Thanksgiving, and then Christmas is just, I don't have to explain Christmas, then New Year's, you watch the ball drop down in New York. It's always something to do. It's a great time of the year. Like, if you had a shitty year up to now, it's not gonna be shitty no more. November and December, are the best months of the year because one you want to end the year on a good note so if you was messing up in the beginning of the year here's your chance to end it on a good note so you gotta love it thanksgiving now let's talk about thanksgiving i love thanksgiving and not even just because of the food but you know you, you get to see your family and you get to talk now with me i see my family a lot so i don't think people should use the holiday season to see their family or some people feel obligated, like, oh, I gotta go see blah, 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 which it was just very wrong. You shouldn't use the holidays just to see your family. You should be seeing your family, you know, quite regularly. I mean, you don't gotta live with them every day, but, you know, you should always be talking to your grandmother or checking out with your cousins or something. You always want to keep in touch with your fam, all right? But Thanksgiving is great for me because the food. What? Y'all don't understand. Thanksgiving is the one time of the year where you gotta have a whole bunch of food and eat it. You get 10 plates, can't nobody judge you. You can just, yum, 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 yum. can't nobody judge you, why? Because that's what you're supposed to be doing on Thanksgiving. You're supposed to be eating and you're supposed to be getting full and you're supposed to be having fun. Now this is what I do every Thanksgiving, this is how I warm up. Now, 
me and my dad, right? We won't eat that whole entire day until Thanksgiving. So breakfast, no. Lunch, no. Snack, no. So you're probably saying, why won't you guys eat on Thanksgiving Day? No, we eat. Trust me, we eat. But the idea is, if you don't eat during the whole day until you go out to whoever's hosting Thanksgiving dinner, so we'll probably have Thanksgiving dinner at 4 or 5, I don't know, 6, something like that, 4 or 5 maybe, maybe 1, I don't know, 4 or 5 black people time, which is like 6. So, if I don't eat that whole day, when I do finally get ready to eat, I'm going to be starving. So, I'm going to be eating and eating and eating because I'm, I'm hungry. Like, I'm, I'm hungry. Like, legit, I am hungry. So, I'm going to go in there. I'm yum, 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 eating everything because I'm, 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 not, I'm not hungry. Oh, excuse me. I am hungry. So, that's, that's the goal you want to do with Thanksgiving. Now, the thing I respect the most is, you know, your family that prepares the dinner because that's not no joke. Some families cook for like two days straight. Like, when I have Thanksgiving, it's a lot of food to eat. It comes to the point where it's so much food, you have to take a lot home. And, and like I said, I love Thanksgiving, but I hate Thanksgiving leftovers just because of how long they last. Like, sometimes you just get tired of eating stuff in the turkey. You can, you can only eat so much stuff in, in turkey before you're just like, okay, I'm about to throw up. I had enough. Okay. That's that. And then you get to watch sports. Sports are on. Who doesn't like sports? You got football and a basketball game on. It's going to be great. You're going to have some people who like one team and some people who like another team. So now you got the, the great debate on who's going to win whatever game's coming on Thanksgiving. Now, after Thanksgiving, this is where things get a little bit, you know, disappointing. You have Black Friday. Now, I don't do Black Friday. I actually have a whole bunch of friends. I'm gonna say a whole bunch of friends. I have a friend who's not supporting Black Friday. He wants to black out on Black Friday. So basically, don't shop Black Friday. Not even online. Don't even do Cyber Monday. You're not supposed to shop at Amazon. Don't buy. No, that's kind of hard for me because I love Amazon. But you're not supposed to buy anything from Amazon. Uh, Target, Walmart. Um, you know, don't buy any cars or anything. Uh, McDonald's was on the banner. I don't know why you would be buying McDonald's on Black Friday anyway. Um, just, just your general retail stores don't shop there. So, while doing that, I think honestly, you save your money because a lot of people on Black Friday they buy stuff just because it's on sale. Some stuff you don't, if you already have a big TV. Don't got don't go buy a bigger TV because it's on sale. That doesn't work like that. And that doesn't make sense. You're losing money instead of making money, okay? Now, what I want you to do on Black Friday is to just go out and do something that doesn't involve shopping. Now I know that sounds pretty impossible, but do something that's gonna keep you from not buying anything. They go over someone's house and just sit there all day. Because Black Friday, to me, is just... It's too crazy to go out there, man. I don't think it's safe. I've heard multiple story people are, like, shopping at Walmart. And they just got stabbed in line or some shit like that because they were first. Like, you know how fucked up that is? For you to just be standing in line, waiting since, like, what, doors go open at 12? So standing there since midnight, and doors don't open to like fucking five or six o'clock in the morning. And you're just waiting there. You have probably got like a tent and everything. And you're just camping out. Then as soon as the doors open, you go in there first. You got what you want to get. Boom. Knife to the stomach or something like that. Or even worse, you get your things and you come out. Knife in the stomach. So the results of even being first or getting your thing and going to your car. Knife in the stomach. So... Let me ask you this. Is that big TV worth a knife in the stomach? If so, you probably deserve that knife in the stomach. Because you, my sir, are stupid. So, please, 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 please. If you don't need it, don't go get it. It's not worth it. Cyber Monday, I mean, it's safer. But 
even then if you don't need it don't buy it. i don't care how good the deal is only people who should be doing black friday honestly and even then is parents for their kids if your kid wants like a a ps4 or whatever the case may be go buy it black friday because it's going to be cheaper it's probably like $2.99 right now. Way more than what I got. Way less than what I got mine for. I got mine for $500. That's that's a lot of fucking money. $500, uh, maybe like $400 or something like that. But it was a lot of fucking money. So, do that for gifts. Do that for gifts. But don't go to even Walmart. If you really do have to go Black Friday shopping, go to something where it's not going to be that packed. Like, a lot of people don't go to PC Richards and Son, at least where I live. And PC Richards and Son is like one of the best stores in my opinion, but no one goes there, so it's not really going to be that packed. But if you go to like a Best Buy, Target, definitely Walmart is going to be packed. And Cyber Monday, I mean, you got to know where you're shopping at. Now I know a lot of people that's paranoid to online shopping because some people think that their credit card information is going to get stolen or whatever the case may be, which is fine. You can think what you want to think. It's, you want to be secure with your money. I don't blame you. But for me, I wouldn't shop from nowhere but like Amazon, a known, a, a good, well-known site, sites that you shopped at before. If you see a new site and you never used it before and you go spend it and then you don't get your product and you take a bank account and you broke, well, there you go. Cyber Monday. You shouldn't have did that. Don't just stay safe with your money. If you have to go out there, go buy it. But let's just, let's try to not go and do Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Let's save our money and build it up for something much greater. I I don't know if that makes sense, but just save your money. So Black Friday's out the way. Now you're just, you know, waiting waiting for Christmas now. You're probably just staying at home watching the 25 days of Christmas on ABC. Is Is it ABC or is it, um... Whatever fucking channel it is. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When you show the Christmas movies all the way up to Christmas. Christmas comes. And depending on how old you are. You like Christmas or you don't like Christmas. Now. I'm 20. So. If you're any age lower than me. No. If you're lower than 18. You're gonna love Christmas. Why? Because you're still getting Christmas gifts. I'm not getting Christmas gifts no more. My dad was telling me since I was probably 14 or 15. He was like man. Once you get older, you know you ain't gonna be getting no more of these gifts, right? You're gonna be growing. You're gonna have to buy your own shit. You know, and I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, bro, whatever. But, sure enough, when I got older, I got less stuff, which is understandable because you're getting older now. It's your turn to start giving and not receiving. I mean, you could still give gifts, but I mean, you know, you can't go up to your mom and dad and be like, hey, mom, can I get this? Can I get that? And you're grown. That doesn't make any damn sense. So, you know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't not like Christmas to come like getting anything anymore, but it's not, it's not like how it used to be. Like, I'm not about to wake up or I'm not about to not go to sleep just to wake up for, to not wake up for Christmas or whatever the fuck. That doesn't make any sense. Like when I was younger, I would not go to sleep just so when the sun came up, I would go open my gifts. Like I would not be, t- I couldn't sleep. And I probably can't even do it now just because I've been doing it for so long. It's like a tradition. So even now, like, I'll stay up and I won't go to sleep. And I'll just watch my little sister open up her presents. But she doesn't She doesn't do that yet. She'll wake up at 8, 10 o'clock in the morning like my parents. Like, I used to hate that. Like, I used to wake up. If I did fall asleep, I'll still wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And everybody will still be asleep. And I will just be sitting there like, I'll, I'll crack open the door and see if it was up knowing they would sleep. And I'd be like. Mom, are you up? Dad, are you up? And like, go your ass back to bed. No, we ain't up. And then you just sit in there, waiting, looking at the clock, hoping they go get up soon. And then finally they get up, and you go into that living room. Hopefully your your Christmas presents are in your living room. I don't know what other room they would be in, but you go into your living room. You're just waiting. You're waiting, and they come in there, and you're just looking at all the gifts. You don't know which one to open first. You're just like. Now me, when I was little, I used the night before Christmas when they went to sleep, I would go in there. You know, you go in there 
and you start filling the gifts and shit, you're trying to guess what it is, you know, you might see something like in the shape of a rectangle and it's real small and you're like, oh shit, this type of video game I wanted, I just know it, I just know it, I just know it. Or you see like a big, big box, you're like, oh man, this is that that racing car or whatever the fuck I wanted, ooh, 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 ooh. Then you feel something soft and you're like, oh, this is clothes. I don't want clothes, I want video games and this and that, I want toys, not fucking clothes. So... That's what I used to do. But I will always start off with the biggest thing and then work my way down to the smallest. And I'll probably take it take me about maybe a good hour or so to open up my toys. Maybe a good 30 minutes. You know, you just open everything. You don't even know what to do first. I always had a good Christmas and I'm thankful for that. Like, now that I'm older, I appreciate... Well, I, I did appreciate when I was younger, but now that I see all the hard work that my parents had to do just to give me everything that I wanted and a lot of things that I asked for I didn't really need but for them to still go out there and get it for me that was awesome and when I have kids I want to do the same thing whatever they ask for I'm gonna try my hardest to get it I don't give a fuck what it is they can ask for the moon I'm gonna go up to NASA and be like how much does the moon cost can I put it on layaway like <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do now Christmas is great not just for receiving but for giving now i gave gifts last year and it's a good feeling when people aren't expecting a gift like when you give someone a gift and they're not expecting it it's it's amazing like i've seen tears fall because some people they just don't get like once you get older people don't give gifts like your parents you should be giving your parents gifts even your grandparents because they're not going to be expecting that no matter what it is it could be, it could be anything. Even if you don't have a lot, give what you can give. Like I gave my grandmother like forty dollars, and she thought that was like the best thing ever. You know, you just gotta give. And the cars. A lot of people. One thing I hate is when somebody gets a Christmas card. They open it, see the money, and they don't read the fucking card. Like I, I hate that with a burning passion because a message in the card means so much more than a gift itself in my opinion because not only did you get the card the whole process of the card is you went to cvs or whatever you want to you went through all those cards you made cards are over there it's probably like a hundred and something cards you went through every christmas card and you was thinking which one would be the best card for said person and then you finally find the card probably at like 10 15 minutes because I know when I look for a card, it takes me a long time because I'm just like, oh, this one is nice. And I get to the register, I'm like, ah, the other one was nice though. I'm gonna probably put this one back in the, the uh, cashier's just like, oh my god, just get the fucking card. But I get the card, and then when you get the card, you gotta think, what are you gonna say in the card? Now, me, I always gotta be the one up person. If you write something good in one card, I gotta write something better. Now, with me, you know, some people might just write, Happy Christmas, love, blah, blah, blah. But me, I got to write a whole little message like, Merry Christmas, I love you so much. You mean the world to me. I'm glad this, blah, 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 blah. I'm writing a whole paragraph into the card. My handwriting is shit. So, you know, I'm probably going to cover up the, the original message that was in the card <laughs> anyway. But I love I loved the Christmas card. I think I still save my Christmas cards to this day. You got to appreciate the cards and not the money because it's the thought that counts. And I know you, you've probably heard that a million of times, but it really is the thought that counts. Because when people see that you care, it's it. They know that you care and that's enough. Now, after you open up your Christmas gifts, after you do all that, you know, you still have your Christmas dinner. So this is the time where you throw in your new outfit you just got. And I know you're feeling good. When I got my new outfits, man, I used to put them on, right? And I would go in the mirror and just look at myself. I'd be like, man, ooh, 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 you see me shining. You see me looking good. What? I'm about to come through with the red carpet on the ground. What? Doing my pimp walk because I know I look good because I'm in some brand new things. You ain't even seen yet. I got the new shoes. I got some new jeans, shirts hoodie whatever i'm up in here flyer than the what then you go to your, your uh 
family's house or whoever house you're going over to, you know, they see, ooh, I bet you got that for Christmas, honey. Like, yeah, this little son, son they got for me, you know. I, mm, you know, I ain't feeling myself like that. But yeah, you see me. He just came out last week, you know. It's like fun, you know, bragging or whatever. No, you don't. You don't brag. I'm playing with you. But you go over there Christmas time. You see what your cousins or your friends got for Christmas, and you talk about this and that, and then family's talking, recollecting uh, thoughts, memories of old past Christmas parties or whatever. And then they drink the eggnog, which you can't get none of because it's not really eggnog. It's that special eggnog. But this year, I'm 20. 20 is 21 in my book. So when Christmas time come, I'm getting some of that special eggnog, okay? I don't care what my aunt say. I'm getting me some of that eggnog. Because I'm old enough. I'm getting some of that eggnog. Remember, I said that. I'm getting some of that eggnog. But Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. And my grandmother, like, I'm going to take a picture of it this year. And I'm, I'm going I'm to put it on the Instagram for the show. She always does, like, these Christmas decorations inside of her, I don't even want to say living room. Like a... It's, it's like a living room. I don't know what to call it. I'm going to call it another living room. So she has like a table and it has little miniature like Christmas item. I, can't, I really can't explain it. It's like Christmas miniature figures of like dwarves, elves, Santa Clauses, and just uh, people ice skating, throwing snowballs. It's like a Christmas wonderland in there. It's, 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 it's amazing. She does it every year. And I, I always loved it just because it's Christmas. Who doesn't love Christmas? It's just to see that and how it looks is just amazing. So I'm going to definitely take a picture of that and show you guys that because it's simply amazing that she does that every year for us to really give us that great Christmas feel. And then we eat good food after that. And then you go home and you probably, you know, still on your game or whatever you got, a new computer. I know it's something technology, especially in this day and age. It's something technology. So after Christmas, we go up to New Year's. Now, we in New Year's, I honestly never really done anything for New Year's. New Year's is just like, okay. I was never a New Year's person. Probably this year, I'll probably try to go to like a New Year's Eve party or whatever. But I never really done anything besides probably go to my friend's. Yeah, I mean, I go to a friend's house. And we gather up and just like a little social gathering between the fruit friends for the New Year's. But as far as like a whole big party, no, I never would to go see the ball drop. I should probably do that. I should probably do that. I really don't like New York. I've had some bad experience over there, but that'll be another story for another time. But I should probably go see the ball drop. I feel like that's the one thing you have to see in your lifetime. There's always like, I think you have to see the ball drop. You have to get out the country at least one time in your lifetime. You have to get out the country. Those are two things you should always do in your life before you die. But yeah, New Year's, not a big fan of it because I never really do anything too big for it. But this year I'm planning on doing something very big for it. New Year's and coming in the new year, until the new year, stop. Stop, please stop saying you're going to change for the new year. Because most people, 95% of people that say this, never do it. Stop saying, if you're gonna, if you say, I'm not going to be on Twitter as much come the new year. But in all of January, you was tweeting. You, you fucked up already, okay? Stop trying to set goals for the new year just because it's the new year. I'm not saying don't set goals, but... If you're just setting goals just because everyone else is doing it, just because it's a brand new year. Because let's face it, the new year doesn't mean a fresh start. If you if you fucked up last year, most likely you're going to fuck up again next year. Because you're just, I guess, a fuck up. Not meaning you can't change, but if you've been saying you're going to change for the past couple of years, what makes this year any different? And that's where I'm trying to get so we need to we need to stop doing that. Go into the new year and set small term goals because if you do something yearly, you're going to end up lose track of it. Okay, so just try to start off small and just do it month by month by month until you get to this time next year. When you get to this time next year, look at everything that you did 
for the fall for that year that we're currently in. So if you had goals for 2014, when you get to the end of 2015, you should have looked at what you did. Now going into 2016, you need to follow goals, you know, the previous year and just keep on doing that until you're successful in life. And those, that's pretty much the holidays for me. That's the holidays for me. Let me know what y'all think about the holidays. Cause me, I'm not, I'm not the biggest, you know, person come holidays, but you know, I go out there and enjoy it. So let me, let me know how you guys feel about the holidays. Now, before we cut this off, cause this is going to be a quick episode on talking about channel updates. Now I have the Instagram set up, I have the Twitter set up, um, Periscope is set up. Now, I'm trying to put it on iTunes. I'm having a little trouble with that. I'm going to ask a friend to help me set that up because iTunes, I hate with a burning passion. I hate iTunes. I've had some very, very bad experience with iTunes, and I'm still having them now as we speak. So I'm going to try to have a friend help me set that up before I lose my mind with iTunes. And SoundCloud, I was thinking about it, but I don't know. So someone let me know if there's any other podcasting, podcast networks, I guess is the word, for me to use. So I can get this up on somewhere other than YouTube. Because I feel like it'll get more views elsewhere just because YouTube, it's so much going on that it's kind of hard for you to get big on YouTube, I guess. you just I mean, it's a grind. You'll eventually get big, but I feel like I need more networks to really push my stuff out so let me know any other sites that promotes podcasting or hosts podcasting so i can throw it up on there so yeah i'm gonna definitely try to do the daily vlog thing i actually have a webcam now so look up on that so we can stay a little bit more active yeah i would just want to hear me once a week and it'll be a daily thing and then a podcast and i'm trying to do special guests but i'm not sure how i'm gonna do that exactly probably do Skype calls or do some people that I know, but I'll probably do that soon. I'm actually looking for a co-host as well. I want to try that, but I don't know how that's going to work neither because I need someone that's just like me. So if I'm saying something fucked up, you have to say something fucked up as well. So I don't know how that's going to go because I definitely want to try the whole co-host thing just so I can have someone bounce off their ideas as well because sometimes you might not like what I'm saying. You might not agree with what I'm saying, but maybe if I had a co-host, they might you might agree with them more. Like they might be the good, and I might be the bad. So I'm I'm looking out for that. I'm looking at some names now. I'm seeing who I can get, and maybe we can work something out. But best believe, change is coming. Change is coming. I've been gone. This was a quick podcast. I'm actually going to be busy coming next week as well. So I might do a double podcast just because I'm going to a Travis Scott concert the 22nd. Straight up La Flame. So I'm excited for that. So be on the lookout for the next podcast. I am your host, Ty the Host. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. If you're subscribing, subscribe to the channel. Leave a like. Go tweet me. Go follow. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, all that. Once again, peace out. Love you guys. I am Ty, the host. That's a T-N-O-I. Good night, y'all.